so let me start uh, because uh, it is important to understand how to find composition of two map okay yeah composition of functions we have two function yes here we have two function we will create a new function so the idea here is here basically let's say you have a function from a to b yeah and another function you have let's say from you know c b to c so we okay. have a yeah we have a function from a to b that is f we have another function from here b to c this is g so we have a function f from a to b and we have a function g from b to c so so for these two function either the you know the the diagram or the formula are given okay okay right so now we will create a new function the idea here create a new function so we get it very you know the normal way so if you take any point here x in the set a then you know by the function f you get here a point in the set b it is fx right yeah okay then since fx now see see since fx is in the set b so we can apply the function g on fx then we get a point here g of fx this is the important so here yeah so since fx is in the domain of g so therefore we can calculate g of fx so okay all right so so we are getting a new function x goes to first apply f then we apply g so this function we denote by g composition f so it is a function from a to c got it okay yeah yeah okay so now you know what the 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 thing that we have used here basically we need the fx if you look at here we need the condition the fx is in the domain of gx right mm -hmm. yeah otherwise you cannot calculate g of fx right that is necessary condition fine fine right so what uh, see so the main question here find the formula for g of fx and domain of g composition of f okay okay yeah so formula we write down the formula for g composition f and and we write down domain for g composition of f so let me little bit tell you about the domain formula you can easily calculate it will be defined how so g of f applied to x it is nothing but first we apply f on x then we apply g on fx okay okay right so how to calculate domain so domain let me tell you if you look at here the diagram then it is clear that we contain those element from the domain of the first i mean the function f remember you have to take the elements from the domain of the this function in the notation i i have written here g composition f so yeah. this means yes you understand you applying first f then g okay yeah okay yeah. right okay so you know those x belong to domain of f such that the fx must be in the domain of g so if we know the domain for f and domain for g then we can easily calculate domain of g composition f clear okay okay so we we are taking some collection from the domain of f for which this condition satisfy so clearly yeah domain of g composition f is a subset of domain of f right uh okay yeah because we we are taking those element from the domain of f that satisfy this condition fx must be inside the domain of g 
right otherwise we cannot calculate g of fx okay okay fine so let me tell you a example then you understand here the example i think we it it will be better if we go through your homework that you have there okay okay so but before go to that let me explain one example it is a very okay. nice example yes you understand this very proper way hmm. right so let me write here fx is given by fx is given by you know 3 over x and gx is given by yeah 2 over x minus 1 okay okay so yeah find find g composition f the formula applied to x and domain of g composition f that we calculate so the solution so remember so let me write here i think we need a more space so it will be better if i write the solution here okay okay so the solution so let me write down here the formula so g composition f applied to x how it is defined it is defined by g of fx right yeah okay so g of fx mean what 3 over x got it okay yeah. yeah all right so now what is gx 2 over x minus 1 now we are replacing x by 3 over x so what we get 2 over 3 over x minus 1 is it okay yeah yeah okay right now what we can do we can simplify this right huh. okay before go to the simplification let me calculate the domain so should i write here the simplification so let me write here the simplification it will be 2x divided by 3 minus x ah. yes yes so i think i have to write i need a so after simplification what should we get i am writing here so we'll get 2x over 3 minus x is it okay yeah okay just simply we simplify this expression okay so now look at this this is the formula right for g composition f yeah okay so what we are getting the formula we are getting g composition f applied to x is basically 2x divided by 3 minus x this is the formula for g composition f now tell me tell me if you look at this formula then from this you know in this formula which number we cannot put uh, 3 exactly so from the formula it we get that the domain can be all number except 3 right yeah but that is the wrong answer because if you look at the step when you writing from here to here you have here below x right yeah so there is a restriction x not equal to zero for writing from here to here you must need x not equal to zero now okay. yes now you know if you look at this step then what you need you need 3x not equal to one this means x not equal to three right yeah so we have two restrictions we cannot take x equal to zero we cannot take x equal to three but if you use the formula then you are getting only one restriction x not equal to three so by writing formula if you first write the formula and then calculate the domain there will be a chance to get wrong answer okay 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 so then what is the clever way you know to find out domain exactly this so i am explaining here about the domain we get the correct okay. two restriction got it okay right so so let me write down here first domain of f and domain of g what is domain of f look at this 
all number except zero, right? Yeah. Very good. What is domain of uh, G? Actually, F is this. What is domain of G? All number except one. Got it? Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, let me write down the domain by using definition. So, domain of G composition F, you know, are the collection of those elements from domain of F. As I told you, you have to take those elements from domain of F such that fx will be inside the domain of g right yeah okay so okay i i i forget to ask you actually what is your name fatima okay sorry can you repeat fatima fatima yeah okay all right okay so okay thank you so let me let me write down here uh so x belong to domain of f such that so tell me what is the domain domain of f domain of f mean all the number we have to take such that x not equal to zero got it yeah i have a question ah. um why is f of x in the domain of g because oh, you know, okay 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 uh, never mind yeah all right we apply, you know, G on FX. That's why FX must be in the domain of G, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, okay, right. So what should we get? We have to take, FX mean what? FX mean, you know, your formula 3 over X belongs to, you know, X such that X not equal to 1. Okay? Okay. Right. Should I write here, hit this place? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right. So let me write here. So look at this. So we have to take those real number, which is non-zero, and 3 over x not equals to 1, right? So two restriction. Yeah. yeah. So what we are getting? We are getting basically those real number x from first condition. From here, we are getting x not equals to 0. And from second, we getting x not equals to 3. Right? Yeah. What about the x not equals to 1? Uh, sorry, sorry, this one? This is the domain. This is the domain for g. Yeah, but why aren't you including it here? Well, because, you know, if you look at the formula here for g, you have denominator x minus 1. So you have to exclude one, right? Yeah. So therefore, the domain for G, collection of all number except one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at here, you can understand, uh, I think, more clearly. See, when we are calculating G composition F applied to X, you know, first we have to calculate G of X over uh, 3 over X. So here we have the restriction X not equal to 0, right? That, that, it, it, that this is basically this, right? Yes. Okay. Now, when we are writing from here to here, we have denominator 3 over x minus 1. So now, see, we must need this not equal to 0, this expression 3 over x minus 1. So basically, this said theoretically, I have written here, that actually we also getting from this calculation, right? Yeah. Uh, is it okay? Or do I repeat again? No, it's okay. All right. So we are taking those number x for which x not equal to 0 and also 3 over x not equal to 1. Okay, maybe it may confuse you. This is a set. So not mixed with 3 over x and x. You think 3 over x is x and it is not equal to 1. Okay? Okay, yeah. Like that. Okay. So what we are getting? So domain, domain of G composition F is basically all the number except 0 and 3. So if you look at the real line 0 and 3 here, using interval notation, it is negative infinity to 0, union 0 to 3, union 3 to infinity. Got it? Okay. Right. So it is very much, you know, important to understand how to find the domain of G composition of. We will took those elements from the domain of F. So first rest restriction on X 
you get from domain of f then second restriction you get fx is inside domain of g so both restriction you have to take actually the common part okay okay right A any question no it's okay okay so let me go to the homework so there are few question in your homework right yeah i want to go over them yes so let me do that first so let me find the question where it was Yeah. So the question one, right? Yeah. The oh. we'll go in order as the one I sent you. Oh, send me, send me. Yes, please. You are sending now or just previous? No, no, the previous one I sent you. Okay. Okay. I have that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Tell me, there are a question A, C, D. Actually, I did. Which one I do? A, B, C, D. You have. Um. So for the first, just the ones that I included in the homework. So like, this one was A, C, D. A, C, D. Yeah, I will go very fast. A, C, D. Okay. Okay. Right. So I actually you will solve. You know the same way. Just I will, you know the I will guide you. So how to find out? Okay. Okay. Right. So f x is given by f x is given by x square, and g x is given by square root of x. Now what we calculate? Sorry, can you just give me one minute? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. So, uh, all right. So we have two function. We calculate g composition f. This formula applied to x and domain of g composition f. So, yeah. Let's do one by one. So first, tell me what is g composition f applied to x. Okay, so it's g of f of x. Very good. And then it will be... G of okay. what is fx? fx is x squared. x squared, yes. Now tell me one thing. Do we have any restriction on x squared? No, right? No. Yes, we can put any value in the place of x. Okay. Now what we can do? Square root of... Then g of x squared means? That means we do a uh, square root of x squared. Very good. This is the formula. Now, now this is the formula for g composition as x. We calculate yeah. the domain. Yes. From this step, you can decide who, what will be the domain for g composition of f. So from here to here, no restriction. 
on x right yeah but here to here do we have any restriction look at this what you have inside x square right yeah okay now since we know x square is always greater equal to 0 for any real number right yeah for all x belong to r so no restriction also right yeah okay so therefore you know in the first step no restriction in the second step no restriction so the domain of this will be the whole domain of f got it okay right but it will the, the domain of f not all, just all real numbers yeah yeah so no no domain of f we, we will calculate what are, is the domain and what is the domain of g okay okay right so 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 let me write here what is domain of f tell me formula uh, is x square all real numbers all real numbers so i am writing by r what is domain of g domain of g is uh, you all positive. square root of x so in the place x which number you can put uh, greater than zero ah, just... exactly so all the zero number which are greater equals to zero right non-negative yeah. number okay that, that's fine so in exam how you calculate when you writing domain of g composition f how you write let me write here this way you write then you never get mistake okay 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 so domain of this mean it contain those element from domain of f such that fx will be inside the domain of g right yeah okay so this mean we took those you know domain of f is whole real number system so x belong to r such that x square will be in the set i mean the non-negative right oh. fine okay fine right now you have you know in the first you are taking x from real number. Now look at this. Since we know x square is greater equal to 0 for all real number. So there is no restriction. So we can take all real number. Got it? Yeah. Since the region is y because x square get, yes. For all x belong to r. That I exactly told you here. This, this in the step. But in the exam you not write like this. This way you approach. Okay okay right so the next question i saw you did a you know the uh, you did a wrong you know with the question d actually i saw that okay so yeah so i think that we have to do also so let me now the c c you did correct if you look at the c what is fx fx is sin x right x yeah very good what is gx 1 over 1 over x squared. Yes. So let's calculate the formula for G composition F applied to X. Okay. So uh, G of F of X. X. Then I will do G F of X is sin X. Sin X. Now G X is 1. So if you take X, then 1 over so, X squared. Yeah. 1 over sin X So sin squared X. Yeah. This is the formula for G composition F. So, I suggest you not write down the domain from, you know, the formula. Because we have seen that, you know, here, if you write down the domain from the formula, there is only restriction x not equal to 3. But actually the domain, also there is a restriction x not equal to 0, right? Yes. So, try to write down this way. I mean, this way not from the formula okay. okay right okay very good so if you look at this from the formula the domain how you write the sin x part not equal to zero right yeah because it is in the denominator yes okay fine i have a okay. question before um so for the question part a Mm -hmm. At the end, you wrote x is in marine numbers, mm -hmm. x squared is in 
uh, the positive integer. Sure. Um, so why did you do it just equal to all real numbers? What happened to the restriction of positive? Yeah, actually, if you look at this, we're trying to take those real number x for which x square is non-negative, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, see, we know that if you take any real number, then if you make square, then always it is get are equal to zero. So, oh, okay. So, I can just remove. Yes. You can take all real numbers. There are no okay. restrictions. Yes. If you compare here, then you can see the restriction. Okay. Can, yes. We take those non-zero non real number for which 3 over x not equal to 1. So from here, we have restriction x not equal to 0. And from here, we have restriction x not equal to 1. Right? Yeah. That, that's the idea. Okay. Fine. Very good. So let's calculate domain for this. So first calculate domain of f. What is domain of f? fx equal to sin x. Any um, restriction do we have for sin x? No. No restriction. You can put any value in the place of x. Suppose they give yeah. you 10x, then there will be a restriction or 1 over sin x like that. Okay? What will be the restriction if it was? For this? Sorry, what? For example, if it was, if it was sine 10x, what will be the restriction? Ha, that I actually, uh, yesterday I, uh, I was uh, talking about that, you know, but uh, we stop. Uh, uh, but uh, I think I have to tell you that uh, some standard function, what will be the restriction, all the things. Okay? Okay. Yeah, but I think let me go through with exercise. Then after that, I, okay. I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Right. So, sin x function is defined everywhere because you know if you re if you remember the sin x graph how defined oscillating function right like that. Yeah. Okay. So it is defined on all real line right. If you take any you know any point on the real line so and draw the vertical line in it intersect the graph right. Hmm. So therefore, there is no issue with the sine x function. So all real line. So the graph, I mean the domain for f is all real. What is domain yeah. of g? Uh, also all real numbers. No, 1 over x square. You are taking 1 over x square. Uh, just not equals to 0. Yeah, the denominator you have something, so you make it is zero. So x square if you make zero, so then you get x equal to zero. I mean the restriction will be x square not equal to zero. So x not equal to zero. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So all number you can take except zero. So if you have something like you know, if you have fraction or you can say the rational thing. Then the denominator you make zero, from there you get restriction. Okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So domain of F are all real number, domain of G, all real number except zero. Right? Huh. Fine. So now what will be the domain of G composition F? Those element X from domain of F we take such that Fx is inside domain of G. Right? Yeah. So this means x belong to those real number r we you know x we take such that sine square x is not equal to zero. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Fine. This set we have to uh, you know write down if we can and yes we can. So we take those number for which sine x not equal to zero, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, more clearly x belong to r such that sin x not equal to zero, 0. So, now let me tell you the unit circle, how sin x defined. If I give you the unit circle here, so if you take any x, x is the angle, then you know the, this part will be the sin x, right? 
okay all right and this part will be the cosine x so basically the coordinate of this point you have to calculate the first component is cosine x the second component is sine x got it okay right now look at this if your point let's say this is p point if the point is here then there is no height right yeah okay so if the point is here the angle is 0 if the point is here the angle is pi if the point again here then 2 pi then 3 pi 4 pi 5 pi 6 pi like this okay hmm. so sin x 0 if and only if x equal to n pi n is integer okay okay so we will take those real number x such that x not equal to of the form n pi where n is integer got it can you explain this part again all right so i think up to this is clear right this up to this yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. the only thing yes we need to know where sin x become zero right yeah look at the unit circle you know the if you take any angle so you get let's say here if you make a rotation through that angle then you get a point p on the unit circle right yeah okay the first component will give you the cosine x and the second component will give you the sine x okay huh. all right so now see x is the angle now see if you are here so no rotation so x is zero Mm. So, therefore, yeah, this has coordinate 1, comma 0, right? Yeah. Okay. And this has coordinate minus 1, comma 0, right? Mm. So, only two positions, this position and this position called Q. If you are here, then sin 0. If you are at the point Q, then sin 0, right? Mm. So, see, how many way we can here? So, you have a motion on the unit circle. So, no rotation. So, here. So, theta equal, x equal to 0, right? Hmm. Okay. Then, you make a rotation up getting q. So, x equal to pi. Got it? Yeah. Then, you complete full rotation. x equal to 2 pi. Then, one more pi. So, x equal to 3 pi. So, si is it okay? What I am doing? Yeah. All right. So, also, you know the negative angle allows. So, this means in this case, you are making clockwise rotation so clockwise this side so in this way it continue so x equal to minus pi also work x equal to minus 2 pi x equal to minus 3 pi work so sin x become 0 if you if x is this or this or this or this or this okay yeah so therefore so let me write sin x So the sin x equal to 0 if and only if x equal to of the form n pi. n is either 0 or 1 or 2 or minus 1, minus 2, 3, minus 3, 4, minus 4 like this. So okay. as a set notation this. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. I understand. Right. Okay. So sin x will not be 0. This means x not be of the form n pi. Yeah. So yeah. So the main part here you have to properly understand the domain for you know the behavior of the sine function okay hmm. now see instead of giving sine if i put here cosine then what happened instead of giving sine if i put here cosine x then so wh wh where cosine become zero this place let me put here this place and this place right yeah because this has coordinate 0, 1, this has coordinate 0, minus 1. So yeah. the first, yes. Okay. So if I give you cosine, so let me write down here. Let me put it here. So if, if I give you, if we get this formula, G, then G composition Fx will be what? 1 over cosine square x, right? Yeah. So in this situation, you know how we calculate basically? The domain, look at this. Domain, let me write very uh, clearly. So, uh, in one step, that we took those real number x such that cosine x not equal to 0, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, tell me if you look at, I told you that the first component is cosine. So, here 
cosine 0 and also here cosine 0. So for this point, x need to be pi over 2, right? Yes. All right. Now for this point, pi you have to add. So pi plus pi over 2. So x equal to pi over 2. x equal to pi plus pi over 2. So this is nothing but, you know, you can say 3 into pi over 2, right? Mm. So then more you add pi to get this point, right? Yeah. So then this will be x equal to, you know, if you add pi, so 5 into pi over 2. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So this means we are taking all odd multiple of pi over 2. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. So 1 into 3 into 5 into. So that is similarly the negative number allowed for clockwise rotation. So all real number x such that x is not of the form odd. Odd number in general, how it look like? 2n plus 1? Yeah. Yes. Such that n integer. I think you understood, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically, we calculate where cosine x 0, doge x, and we exclude doge x from this set. That is the domain for this. Okay? Okay. Right. So let me go to the next question. Any question so far? No. Okay. Only thing we need to know how sine x and cosine x is defined. If you have idea about this function, you can solve this question, right? Yeah. Very good. So let me go to the next. The next question is, so here it is. I am doing question D now. Okay. D, yeah? Yeah. You did mistake basically. I saw. Okay. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about the tan x function, the tangent function, okay? Okay. Because you are needed. Yes. Tan x, how defined? Tan x means sin x divided, uh, sorry, yeah, sin x divided by cosine x, right? Yeah. Okay. This is the rational function. The numerator is sin x and denominator is cosine x, right? Oh. So what will be the domain of this function, tan, tan function? You know, those x, we will take such that cosine x not equal to 0. Is it okay? Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, because denominator you have cosine x. Right. Now, as I told you, the cosine x becomes 0 if x is odd multiple of pi by 2, right? right? Yeah. Okay, so you cannot take 2n plus 1 into pi by 2. In this form, if you have number, then you cannot put in the formula of 10x, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that is the restriction. So, for example, 10 of pi by 2, this is not defined. 10 of minus pi by 2, not defined. 10 of 3 pi by 2, not defined. Similarly, it going on. Minus 3 into pi by 2, all these are not defined. Got it? Hmm. Very good. Nice. Any question so far about yeah. this tan x function? Hmm? No. All right. Very good. So, if you have this idea, you can solve this question. So, see how f defined. It is a multi-part function. I mean, because it has two part basically this function. How it is defined? You take pi by 2 if x rational, right? Yeah. Okay. For example, f of 5 over 2, it will be pi by 2. And pi by 4 if x not rational, I mean irrational, square root of 2, square root of 3, like that. Okay? Yeah. Now how gx defined? gx defined by tan of x, right? Mm. Okay. As we know, what is the domain? Domain of f is all real number by definition, right? You can take rational, you can take irrational, okay? Mm. At rational, it taking pi by 2. At irrational, it taking pi by 4, right? Oh. Okay. What is domain of g? 
all number except odd multiple of pi by 2. Right? Oh. Very good. So now look at this. If you look at here the formula when we calculating G composition of F. So apply to X. How it is defined? G of FX. Right? Oh. Now see. Look at the FX. You know what we have seen in the previous example. There was only formula for FX. For example here we had X square. Yeah. Yeah, but here, here we had also sin x. But in this case, f has two part for rational pi by 2, for irrational pi by 4, right? Oh. Okay. Now look at this. You know, g can take those number which are not of the form odd multiple of pi by 2. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we have two situation here. g of pi by 2 if x rational g of pi by 4 if x is not rational is it okay yeah okay now see here if you look at this we cannot put pi by 2 for the function g right so this yeah. is not allowed got it yeah so you cannot take rational number in the domain of g composition of f you can take only the irrational number right yeah okay so so how you write down this i explain in the question you know the my in the homework you can see i wrote that since since tan of pi by 2 is not defined so, x, you know, the rational number, you know, if x belongs to q, then x does not belongs to in the domain of G composition f, right? Mm -hmm. But tan of pi by 4 is defined, at, right? Yes. So, you can take, right? So, yeah, you know, yeah. so, so if x belong to, yeah, does not belong to q, then x belong to domain of, yes. So, domain content, you know, those, so, you can write like this or this way, I am writing, anyone, you, you can do it. So, so, g, domain of g composition f, yes, equal to x belong to domain of, f such that fx inside the domain of g right yeah. okay so x belong domain of f mean what all real number right yeah such that fx fx mean what now look at this fx is uh, pi by 2 and pi by 4 right yeah so so if you look uh, directly you can write here only thing we can take here the irrational numbers right x such that x does not belongs to q. Got it? Hmm. Because if you take res x rational, then fx will be pi by 2, which is in, not in the domain, right? Yeah. Okay. So, domain of g composition of f are the all irrational number. And what is the formula? g composition f, x, you only can take irrational number, so g of fx, so it is g of pi by 4. Yeah. So that is yes. 10 pi by 4. So 10 pi by 4 mean 1. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So I think you uh, got the point where you did mistake. Yeah. All right. Fine. Should I give one more example from composition of function different kind? Um, maybe just uh, if it was like, for example, we said sine 10x. Okay. Using those? Sign 10 like that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me tell you here that. Uh, okay. Fine. So let me write down here fx equals to.
ओके सो लेट मी राइट डाउन हुयर एफ एक्स इक्वल टू यू नो कोसाइन एक्स एंड जी एक्स इक्वल टू वन ओवर एक्स माइनस वन फाइन ओके सो फाइंड जी कंपोजिशन एफ अप्लाई टू एक्स एंड डोमेन ऑफ जी कंपोजिशन एफ that we do can you try it please yeah okay first write down the formula okay so it will be uh, g of f of x mm -hmm. and then it will be g of cosine x. x yeah then and then it will be cosine uh sorry uh 1 one over All real numbers except for one. Except one. Very good. X, but one not allowed. Right? Huh. Okay. Let me write down the domain of G composition of F. You know, by definition, we have to take those elements from domain of F such that F X is in Isn't... the domain of yes G. Right? Yeah. Okay. So those X belong to R. We are taking such that. You know, f x mean what? F x mean yeah, cosine x is in the yeah domain of so yeah domain of G. Okay, all right. So this means look at the domain of G. Domain of G contain all real number except one, right? Hmm. So x belong to R such that cosine x since in the domain of x. So cosine x must be not equal to one. Is it okay? Yeah. Very good. Now, you know, to write down this set explicitly, we need to know where actually cosine x become one. That we need to find out, right? Hmm. Okay. So look at the unit circle again. I told you the, you know, the first component. Will give you the cosine value, and the second component will give you the sine value. X is the angle. Okay. Hmm. So these components will become one. Where this place, right? Hmm. And 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 also, you know, actually only this point it becomes one. There is no other point at this point only, right? Yeah. Because This position is zero comma one. This position is minus one comma zero. This position is zero comma minus one. Only this is the choice, right? Hmm. Okay. So no rotation we can take first. So x equal to zero. Then one complete rotation. So x equal to two pi. Then one more complete rotation. X equal to four pi, right? Hmm. One more complete rotation. Six pi. It keep going on. So you can take also the clockwise. So x equal to minus two pi. Minus two pi means from here to here. So you are here again this point, right? Hmm. X equal to minus four pi. Dot 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 like that. So cosine x equals to one if and only if x equal to the even multiple of pi, right? Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So cosine x become one if x is of the form two n pi n is integer. So if you write down this set explicitly, we take those real number which have the restriction x not equal to two n pi, where n is integer. Is it okay? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's the idea. Any question? No. Okay. I think you can solve this kind of question, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, if I, if you have restriction 10, 10x equal, if I give you instead of cosine x, if I give you tangent x, then how you do this question? So, let me do it. So, let you have G composition F. In that case, what, what should we get? We get 1 over tangent X minus 1. Right? Mm. Okay. So, domain will be what? Domain of G composition F. So, similar way if you explain. So, contain those real number for which 10X not equal to 1. Is it okay? Yeah. Now, see, we we want the value of x for which 10x not equal to 1. So, this means first we calculate 10x equal to 1. Then we exclude those x, right? Yeah. Okay. Look at this. If you look at this 10x, mean what? Sine divided by cosine. So, if oh. you get, yeah, two components same, then it is possible. So, it is only possible if you take pi by 4, okay? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, at pi by 4, if you take the angle pi by 4, then this is 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. So, 10 is 1, right? Hmm. And also, you can take this, you know, this angle. This angle will be pi plus pi over 4. So, 5 pi over 4. Got it? So, this is minus 1 by square root of 2. This is basically from the trigonometry. I think you have yeah. the course trigonometry, right? Yeah. Okay. So, we will solve 10x equal to 1. Just knowing this information, you know, how to solve then all, all x for which 10x equal to 1? Any idea? Can you tell me? Sorry, I can't hear you. Your voice is for... Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Can we calculate 10x equal to 1? Hello? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, we know at pi by 4, it is 1, right? Huh. And 5 pi by 4, it is 1. Got it? Yeah. See what we can do? We can do pi by 4, we can take. Then make a complete rotation, right? So again, yeah. Get, yeah, get back, yes. So 2 pi plus pi by 4. So basically, what should we get then? 9 pi over 4, right? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. So now we make one full complete rotation, right? Yeah. So that way. One thing you can do that, uh, you know, you can draw the graph. You can draw the graph, then you can do that. Okay? Okay. Right. So, okay, okay. So, give me a second. I got a call, okay? Okay, okay. Okay. We solve 10x equal to 1. Okay? Mm. Right. Look at this. You know, first we calculate the principal value. See, look at this. What are the principal value? 10x equal to 1 means you have two principal value. You can take x equal to pi by 4 and you can take 5 pi by 4. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Now, what you do? 
you just add with this and also this you know 2 and pi got it yeah so this is nothing but pi plus pi by 4 right mm. so in general x will be what you just add 2 and pi with pi by 4 and with also you add 2 and pi okay yeah, yeah. Okay, so x will be what? 2n pi plus pi by 4. Let me make you the easy, more easier. So, uh, for every question, the same logic will work. I got an idea, okay? Okay. Okay. So, you can, you have to take even, multi, even and odd, right? Yeah. So, this means, in general, both combine this, then what you get? You get, it is of the form n pi plus pi by 4. Got it? Yeah. So what we are getting? We are getting x such that x not equal to of the form n pi plus pi by 4. Is it okay? Oh, yeah. Right. So, so let me tell you one more example from this. Then we stop this. Okay? Okay. We go to the next concept then. Yeah. So I got an idea. You can do all the question. For example, let's solve question here. Few question. Then you understand. If I asked, solve this, cosine x equal to 1 over 2, okay? Okay. Right. So, we solve this. So, we take the help of unit circle. So, you have the here the unit circle. You know, we have to find the value x for which the adjustment, I mean the base is 1 over 2, right? Hmm. We know it is for 60 degree. And that is from the table actually. If you take yeah. Yeah, pi over 3, then this coordinate will be 1 over 2. And this coordinate will be square root of 3 over 2, right? Yeah. This is the cosine x, yes. Now see, now see also the same logic, you know, work here, right? So, if you take pi over 3, it's okay. Also, you can take, you know, this position, right? This position. Yeah. 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 Okay. This is what? This is 1 over 2 minus negative 3 over 2. So, this means the angle will be what? This is pi over 3, right? So, this angle yeah. will be, yeah. 2 pi minus pi over 3. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay, fine. So, uh, right. So now, now the principal values are what? You have two choices for x. Principal value, okay? Hmm. First, you have to write down the principal value. Hmm. Principal value is pi over 3 and 2 pi minus pi over 3. Got it? Hmm. So, general value will be what? The general value will be x equal to, you have to add 2 and pi, right? Hmm. And this will be 2 and pi plus 2 pi minus pi over 3. Okay? Hmm. Right. So, what we are getting? We are getting x equal to 2n pi plus pi over 3 and we are getting 2n plus 1 into pi minus pi over 3. All right? All right. So, the solution will be this and this. Fine? Fine. So, th this way, you know, you have to know about where cosine x become 1, where sine x become 1 like that. Okay. 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 I think got it. You got it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, composition of function is done. Now, let me go to the cardinality. I mean, infinite set and finite set concept. Okay. Which, which question? Uh, the next topic. The next topic. It, uh, rest, rest part. Uh, it's not 9. Let A and B re be real numbers. Consider functions. This is bijection. Um... Bijection, yeah. Those, those. Oh, oh. 
What's that nine? Yeah, nine and there's A, B, C. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Those also, yeah, I can explain here. Okay, okay. That is from the concept of bijectiveness. Okay? Yeah. Uh, okay, so let me go here. Next page. So you have a function f from r to r. The first question we are considering it is a function from r to r. A, B are real numbers. It is given by fx equal to ax plus b. Okay. Uh -huh. We will check the condition on a b for which this function will become a bijective function from r to r okay right so see if you take first you look at the function this is a linear function right oh. okay so this will become zero i mean the if you take a equals to zero then everything goes to the constant b right yeah, but why are you taking a equals zero? Uh, because see that the target here we find the values or the restriction on a b values of a b for which f is bijective. That is our target, right? Oh. So this means we want to make f injective also surjective, right? Okay. First observation. Just if we guess it. If you take a equal to 0, then what happened? The formula will become fx equal to b, right? Yeah. Okay. So this means in this case, all real number map to the point B. So, injectiveness break, right? Hmm. 1 goes to B, 3 goes to B. All number map to the point B. So, injectiveness break, right? Yeah. So, therefore, A0 not allowed. I, I'll tell you, you know, completely. This is just the first we are guessing what could be the value for AB. Then we write complete way, okay? Okay. Right. So, A0 not allowed because if a is zero then injectiveness break right hmm. so in a is non-zero it is necessary condition for the function to be bijective now is it sufficient condition i mean if a not equal to zero then it will be a bijective function and the answer is yes okay hmm. so 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 here let me write down that suppose a not equal to 0. Suppose a b real number, a not equal to 0, and no restriction on b. Okay? Hmm. There is no restriction on b. You can take any number in the place b. So then we check it is injective. Can you check injectivity? Did you understand? Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Injectivity, you know, I told you how to check, right? Hmm. So, this is what? A of x1 plus b, a of x2 plus b, b, b cancel out. So, you are getting a x1, a x2. Now, you can cancel a by dividing both side a, right? Yeah. Dividing both side by a. And it is possible because a not equal to 0. Got it? Yeah. So this cancel out this, yes, this cancel out this. So if your A0, you know, then see, 0 into 3 equal to 0 into 2, no doubt, right? Mm. So we cannot conclude 3, here 3 not equal to 2. Did you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If here you're taking 0, then you cannot divide both side by 0. See, to cancel A from both sides, we have to divide both left hand side and right hand side by A, right? Mm. And we only can divide if the divisor is non-zero, right? Mm. Yeah, that, that's the important. So we use here the condition. 
So x1 equal to x2. So injectiveness is done, right? Huh. Fine. So let me tell you the surjectiveness. So this condition is enough. A not equal to 0 and B has no restriction. It is any real number. To check it is surjective. I mean injective and surjective. In general, bijective. So let me write here. Here injective. Injective part. So let me write there surjectivity. So how we do? Let y is a real number from the codomain. Okay. Hmm. Now we solve for x. We start with the equation f x equal to y. If we can find x in the domain, here the domain is all real number. So then it is surjective, right? Yeah. So a x equal to y minus b. So now see again we will divide both side by a. It it we can do it because a not equal to zero. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, so x equal to y minus b by a, which is a real number, right? Huh. So y minus b by a is a tree match. Tree image of y. So f is surjective. Is it okay? Huh. So it is both injective and surjective. So if your a not equal to 0 and b is any real number, then the map is surjective. Okay? Hmm. Now we do the also the necessary condition. So if this condition is sufficient. If you take this condition, the map becomes bijective map. Now the necessary condition means what? On, suppose you consider it is bijective, then you have to check a not equal to 0, right? Hmm. Okay. See. It is very trivial that uh, so let f is bijective, right? Hmm. So then we prove a not equal to 0, okay? Hmm. So if a equals to 0, then what happened? The formula become a constant map, right? So. Constant function, which is not injective. Fine. So this implies yes, a must be not equal to 0. So this is the condition we get, right? a not equal to 0. Huh. And there is no restriction on b. You know, you know, have not take any restriction on b. It is true for any b value. Got it? Huh. That's the idea. So what we did, first we guess what condition we can take actually on a, b. So since a is the coefficient of x, Basically, the, here you, your input x and this term only affect on this formula ax. So, the formula affected by a, right, only? Yeah. So, if we give a condition on a, that is exactly a not equal to 0. I think it's okay, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, with this question, let taking the domain z to z. Fine. Okay. Then what happens? Now z to z if you take. So integer input is integer, output also need to be integer, right? Hmm. So fx equal to ax plus b. So since since ax plus b is integer for all x belong to g, right? Hmm. So let me write here. Clearly, clearly clearly this is integer for all x belong to integer right yeah okay so take x equal to 0 then what we get a into 0 plus b equal to b which is integer got it yeah okay so b is integer now take a equals to 1 x equal to 1 then what we get a plus b is a integer right Hmm. Okay. Now what do we have? We have B integer A plus B integer. So then this imply what? A plus B minus B. It is also integer, right? Hmm. Why? Because 
difference of two integer is integer, right? Mm. So we get a also integer. So, so if this is a map from z to z, a b must integer, right? Mm. So let me tell you the condition first. Then I explain. Then uh, the condition will be this is bijective if and only if. Okay. Wait, can you go back to the previous slide? <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, so for this part, like for this, the, this part, it's not doing the same thing when you put a is equal to zero, but the injection, injection is cutting. Okay. So let me go like, to PDF. I think I have the PDF, right? You send me. Yeah, here in this in part A, so we are excluding A equals zero because uh, it 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 uh, like cuts the injectivity, right? We said. Yes, that's why we. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So in the second like example, the one we're doing now from from uh, Z to Z. Uh huh. Uh, why it's not the same thing? It will also cut interactivity, no? Ha! Huh, but the problem will be, na, you know what? If you take a not equal to zero, then injectivity works. But the problem will be with surjectiveness. If you take a three, four, five like that number, except one and minus one, then surjectiveness will not work. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So that's why we, we need to make it more restriction on A and B. That I am going to write here because our function is Z to Z. So fraction not allow here. Okay. Okay. Look at this. What is the what was the pre image for Y? Hmm. If we take Y any integer, then we need this also integer, right? Hmm. Integer mean this not appear. So this not appear mean a we can take one or negative one. Got it? Mm. So that actually give us the clue how to give the condition on A. Got it? Mm. From integer to integer, we have to make the restriction A one and minus one. Is it okay? Yeah. Right. So let me write here the condition. This is bijective. If and only if A equals to one or minus one and B has no restriction. Okay, all right. One more thing. Uh, B is any integer. Okay. Oh. Fine. That is the idea we do. If it, so, first we consider we check the condition true. I mean, if it is a bijective map, then we check a one and minus one and B integer, and also converse we prove that if this condition hold then bijective okay okay right so what we have done first we considering this is bijective we consider this first all right uh. we prove this condition yes did you understand how do i guess this because it is a map from z to z so a and b must be integer that we proving here first Initially, how do you guess what will be the condition? Actually, looking at the formula, you need output integer. In the place x putting integer, output need to be integer. So, a, oh. b must be integer, right? First condition. Oh. And second condition, second guess is a must be 1 and negative 1 because, you know, pre image otherwise become fraction. So, a 1 and minus 1. And there is no restriction on b, right? Oh. That we get from the question one that give you the clue from when you trying from Z to Z, how you write down the conclusion. I mean on A B. Okay. Oh. Yeah, this actually give us A one and minus one. Let me prove it here mathematical way. Okay. Okay. Right. So so bijective we, we prove that. So first we assume let this is bijective. We will check this condition 
a equals to 1 minus 1 and b is any integer. So that we are doing here. First we can check a b both integer. How? Since this is integer for all x belong to g, particularly we select x equal to 0, so then we get b is integer, right? Mm. If we take x equal to 1, because in the place x we can take any value, right, from g. Mm. So we select 1, then what we get a plus b, a into 1 plus b, I mean a plus b is integer. So b is integer, a plus b is integer. We know difference of two integer is integer. So this minus this is integer, so a is integer, right? Mm. Okay. So we get a, b are integer. Now we prove. Now we will we will saw a equals to one or my one and minus one. This is the restriction. Okay. Hmm. That we prove. So how we do this? So since so of course this is this we guess from here. This must be an integer for all y integer, right? Yeah. Okay. So from there we can guess that. So since C C A B integer, this imply what? A plus B plus 1 also integer. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Now our map is bijective. So it is surjective, right? Huh. Okay. So there exists X belong to integer such that you know fx will becomes a plus b i mean this will have a pre image right this is it okay yeah so you can find some x from integer this is true right yeah okay now what we can say this from here we can say ax plus b equal to a plus b plus one so you can ask me the question why I immediately select this? Because I did this question first, you know, in my mind, what I have to do, like that. After finishing, you get the idea, okay? Okay. Right. So, if you simplify, what you should we get? We get this and this cancel out, right? Okay. So, we get AX equal to A plus 1. Is it okay? Yeah. So, this means we get X equal to a plus 1 divided by a, right? Oh. Okay. Now, see, we need this is integer, right? We yeah. need, yes. a plus 1 divided by a belongs to z. It is, so now this is only possible if and only if a equal to 1 or minus 1. Got it? Oh. Yeah. So, if you consider f is bijective map, so f is bijective imply a is 1 and minus 1. So this is the restriction on a. In your homework, you only consider a equals to 1. Why did you did not take minus 1? I don't know. Uh, yeah. All right. Fine. Okay. Right. One second. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so from I'm confused where you got a plus b plus one from. Yeah, that how I decide. Look at, look at this previous page. You know, uh, I don't know. I think I cannot crop it from here. So look at this. I'm let me write here. The this is the slide from the previous one. So here, if you take y, y has pre image what? y minus a by a sorry y minus b by a right oh. so basically f of y minus b by a equals to y right oh. okay so here we will cleverly select a number using a b that you know give you the condition on a is one and minus one so that i took y equal to a plus b plus one that I took cleverly. Okay. Okay. I mean, then what do you get? You get a plus b my plus one minus b 
divided by s this this cancel out so you need a plus 1 by a integer and yeah and this is integer if and only if a equal to plus minus 1 okay so this is a little bit number theory question okay right so you can take a1 and negative 1 okay and b is any integer fine so that is the restriction on a Okay. Right. 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 Okay. So we prove the necessary condition and this condition also sufficient. Okay. Yes. So I mean, so you consider now a equal to one minus one and b is any integer, then the map is bijective. So first, if you take the case a equal to one and b is any integer, how the map defined fx equal to x plus b, right? Yes. Injectivity you can prove. I am not doing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. F of x1 equal to f of x2. This will imply x1 plus b equal to x2 plus b. So what should we get? x1 equal to x2. So injective oh. done, right? Yeah. Surjectivity y equal to fx. Then what should we get? y equal to x plus b. We have to solve for x. So x plus b equal to y. So we get x equal to b y minus b. No restriction from here to do this step to do this step, right? Oh. So this is integer since y is integer, right? Oh. Y, y and b integer, that's why. Oh. Yeah, right. So f is subject bijective. Yeah. So similarly, if you took the condition a equals to minus 1, and b integer you can prove bijective so in this case the formula become fx equal to minus x plus b so injectivity huh. yeah should i do or you understood no i understood very good nice okay so now next is if you consider this is your function from n to n right huh. so now n mean the set of all natural number got it huh. see the formula is what fx equal to a x plus b so it is clear that a b must be integer got it uh -huh. uh, yeah did you understand a b must be integer because see we have a x plus b natural not integer natural number sorry sorry for all x belong to natural number, right? Yeah. Okay. So, in the place, if you put 1, you get natural number 2, you get natural number 3, then you get natural number, right? Hmm. So, if you take x equal to 1, then what we get? a plus b is a natural number, right? Hmm. If you take x equal to 2, then what you get? 2s plus b is a natural number, right? Hmm. Okay. Now see, this is a positive, this is a natural number, this is, a, now, now see the question here, which, look at this, if you look at this, what should we get here? Basically, if you take 2a plus b minus a plus b, it is a natural number. Now the question, is this quantity is bigger than this quantity? All right. So let me tell you this way. This this is fine, right? Up to this is okay. With, why did you do like the, the minus? No, I'm not allowing the minus because on the set n we cannot allow the minus sign, right? Okay. Yeah, but we're doing the clever way. See, two a plus b is natural number. Imply what? A plus b plus b is a natural number is it okay oh. ah, yeah, uh, no 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 a plus a plus a plus b right so why are you doing the sum confusion? yeah yeah i am i am deciding that a b are natural number that we are going to do first okay yeah so, see, in the natural number set, what we can do, we can add, we can multiple, we can give a order relation, right? Hmm. The subtraction not allowed, division not allowed. Hmm. 
although you can do in the bigger situation but here not so let me try yeah using this so we know this is here this is here so 2a plus b is here so a plus a plus b is here now see this is natural number we know right hmm. so if this is natural number so this must be natural number right hmm. so that i am trying to say a plus b is a natural number so here mathematical question comes that if a natural number and x plus a natural number then x must be natural number this is the question mathematical question and i i think you believe it right oh. otherwise i have to go very axiomatic way that is right now difficult for you right oh. yeah so since a plus b natural number because of this and so and the sum is a natural number so this part also natural number if you believe this expression okay okay yeah so a natural number now a natural number now repeat the process a is a natural number and a plus b is a natural number so b is a natural number is it okay yeah okay so if you consider this is bijective map so let me give you the restriction a b must natural number okay hmm. so that so here the conclusion you write that is you know the condition bijective if and only if if and only if a equals to 1 and b equals to 0 got it oh. right okay one thing i forget to tell you that uh, ah, 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 ah. Fine, fine 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 why b is equal to 0 Ha ah, b could be zero. This this statement I we have weak part this statement. Okay. Mm. So if a is natural number and x plus a natural number, then we can conclude here x can be zero also. Okay. That okay. is important. That is important. Yes. So so a can be zero right hmm. so now look at this if you consider you know your a zero then what happened if you consider a zero if a equal to zero then fx become the constant map which is not bijective got it hmm. right so this imply a must be not equal to zero right yeah okay so the number you know so what we have a is not zero right oh. so a is a natural number which is not equal to zero and a plus b is a natural number right oh. so now a is a natural number and this natural number so what we can conclude we can conclude b is a natural number or zero got it okay. same logic so we have okay. restriction yes we what we get we get so far a not equals to zero i mean natural number and b will be basically natural number union zero right sure. but we particularly we have we will see that a, b must be zero it cannot be non zero okay sure. right we assume here that bijectiveness then we are we are making the conclusion that a equal to 1 and b equal to 0 right sure. what we have now we have a natural number and b is you know natural number or zero we'll prove first b not equal to zero okay hmm. let let uh, you know uh, first let me prove a equal to one okay so let b not equal to zero fine 
Hmm. Then the formula becomes f x equals to a x plus b, right? Hmm. A is a natural number, right? Got it? Yeah. Okay. Look at this. If you have this kind of situation, two x plus three, right? Hmm. Then it does not hit it the b point, right? Hmm. Look at this. Uh, actually, here, if you consider x, you are taking the natural number, right? Yeah. So x is get r equal to one. Yes. Now, a x is get r equal to a, right? Yeah. So yeah, a x plus b is get r equal to a plus b, right? Yeah. So it taking the value, you know, from a plus b, right? Right. Now look at this. Ah, uh, yeah. Please tell me. Can you repeat? Uh, yeah, sure. See, what we assume here, we assume b not equal to zero, right? Hmm. Now we have the condition b not equal to zero and a natural number. We, we are assuming this. Now yeah. formula is this. Yes. X taking natural number, so x get r equal to one. So a x get r equal to a. So a x plus b get r equal to a plus b, right? Yeah. Okay. Now b not equal to zero and b natural number imply what? B get r equals to one, right? Yeah. So then this imply what? A plus b. This is get r equal to one plus a. Is it okay? Yeah. And one plus a strictly greater than one since a not equal to zero. Is it okay? Yeah. So what we are getting if you combine this one and this is two by one two, what should we get? We get a x plus b is strict greater than one, right? Oh. So this means this mean one has no pre image, right? Yeah. Is it okay? Logic, did you understand? Yeah. Okay. So, surjectivity not work, right? But yeah. it is not possible. Yeah. It is not possible. So, B must be zero. Let me repeat again. What is the power of B, you know, equal to zero? If you consider B not equal to zero, you and B natural number, you can write this conclusion, right? B get R equal to one. Mm -hmm. So a plus b get r equal to 1 plus a. Now a not equal to 0. We already know a natural number. So 1 plus a strict greater than 1. So a plus b strict greater than 1. Now ax plus b get r equal to a plus b. So ax plus b strict greater than 1. Got it? Hmm. So 1 has no pre-image. Because we cannot find any x for which since there does not exist any x natural number such that a x plus b equals to 1. So this means f x equal to 1. It is not possible because all is strict get up than 1, right? Yeah. So it has no premise, so it is not possible. So must have b equals to 0. See, we start with, you know, b either natural number or 0 we prove here. b cannot be, okay, b cannot be 0, right? Mm. Uh, sorry, b cannot be non-zero. So b must be 0. So we get B0 and A natural number, right? Yeah. Okay. Now we prove A is 1. There is only choice for A. This is 1. How you do this? So A plus B plus 1, same logic, is a natural number, right? Hmm. So there exists X belong to natural number, yes. Such that Fx equal to A plus B plus 1. So this means what should we get? ax plus b equal to a plus b plus 1. So, b, b cancel out. So, what should we get? We get here x equal to a plus 1 divided by a, right? Yeah. Now, a natural number. So, this will be natural number. This is belong to n if a equals to 1. Got it? Hmm. We cannot allow minus 1 here because we need natural number. Negative not allow, right? Hmm. See. We need this will not become fraction. 
it will not become fraction only if a equals to 1 because a you are taking from natural number right okay okay so that we getting the condition f is bijective that imply a equals to 1 b equals to 0 the conversely you know the converse if you consider a equals to 1 b equal to 0 then the formula become fx equal to what ax plus b mean x right oh. so this is the identity map right oh. x goes to x is bijective nothing to prove right oh. so so this is the condition did you understand yeah actually this question was very you know clever question i don't know you your your professor from math background yeah yeah oh he did phd yeah okay okay actually he's from uh, uh, which country us uh france france mm. france people actually very clever to do mathematics most of the mathematician mm. actually from france you can mm. see okay good 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 this question was very nice actually lots of information you have to do here mm. i think you got the point right yeah i don't think like the for the quiz I don't think it will be like as complicated as the homework. I think it will be a little more simple. Which you get very simple question. They will give a question. They ask, take it in injective or not. Take it as subjective or not. Like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Find the composition, domain of the composition. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, cardinality about uh, of two set like that. Next concept, mm -hmm. basically. So, uh, should we continue now or? Uh... Yeah, maybe we can do one more question, then we continue later. The quiz is tomorrow, so I will only like today we can meet and then later there's no need. Okay, okay, see you. So, so today, what time are you free another like later? Yeah, the same time, like yesterday. Eight. Like, yeah, so eight. eight. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let, let me go to the next concept first, then we can start the solution. Okay. All right. So now we are going to do... Which question? Uh, it is all about the infinite set, finite set, and cardinality. So let me tell you the definition, then we start. Because the rest question depend on this. Okay? Okay. Okay. If we put all the things. Okay. So, uh, so let me write down here. So equipotent of two set, okay? Mm. I don't know. I think they called equipotent of two sets. So let me check the name, what they use here in your uh, one second. I think you, you got the idea about bijective map, also about the composition of map, right? Yeah. Can you, uh, like your voice is not very clear. Do you need more examples? Your voice is not very clear. Is oh, oh, one second, one second. One second. Is it possible we can start uh, after uh, 30 minutes because I have to go to take uh, breakfast? Okay, okay. Is it okay? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you'll send me the link then. I stop here, okay? Okay. Okay, okay, fine.